know where the treats at. Is, is this the, the passing of the torch, right? Is this what this signifies? It, it comes down to that, that front office and what they feel is most important. The champ is here. We've touched down from a higher plane. Right? You made it here. You we always look forward to that week because it was always intense. You know that we ain't coming back. We got you. The man, the myth, the legend, Dante Hall. My, my, my favorite player growing up was Dante Hall. I love you guys in the show, but Dante was my guy. Get to dashing because you're still on the war feet. This episode of Chief Concerns is brought to you by BetOnline.ag. Hey there, Marcus Dash here from Chief Concerns. Just want to comment and say BetOnline is your number one source for all your sports betting needs. Get the latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for football, baseball, boxing, golf, and much more. BetOnline continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wagers, including live betting and your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your phone. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember to use promo code BELIEVE, B-L-E-A-V, for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Monday Morning Tight End. I'm Marcus Dash here with legendary Chiefs tight end Jason Dunn. Probably one of the more highly anticipated episodes in a, in a, of a Monday Morning Tight End shows in a while. We had a... Charles Amanahu going on Twitter uh, for like giving a little promotion to the other uh, show tonight. Uh, saying uh, we have nothing to worry about with our defensive line, but we'll, we'll get into that. And, hey, he might be even tuning in right now, watching. He might could be one of the, the live streamers right now, guys. We don't even know. <laughs> could be, man. Hey, if he is, welcome. Welcome, Charles. Welcome to the show, brother. <laughs> How are you doing, brother? Doing well. Doing well, man. A lot, a lot of moving parts, man. These these past couple of hours, you know, day, weekend. Uh I'm doing phenomenal, Marcus. I am. I'm doing phenomenal. It, this, you know, for me, you know, I, I've kind of stayed away from a lot of stuff. A lot of people kind of tweet me or send me messages, and I just kind of took it in. I actually took a break from the phone this weekend, which was a, was a wonderful thing. I hardly picked it up. Picked it up just, you know, every once in a while, periodically, just kind of checking to see what's going on. And it was like Christmas, you know? And we'll start with the Chris Jones signing. It was, hey. My man got it. The Chiefs did, they did right by Chris Jones, did right by the fans, did right by everybody in Chiefs Kingdom and got my man Chris Jones here. And I've been meaning to send the, the one, you know, when we talked about the tweet out, uh, you know, when we, the last show we did on Wednesday, when I was talking about the, uh, there was three guys I wanted to see, you know, have a, a, a press conference like Jason Kelsey. Okay. One was Patrick Mahomes. Another was Travis Kelsey, and of course, Chris Jones. Those three guys. I so said, those three guys, I want them walking out as cheats at the end of their career, not going back, signing the one day. I don't want no, no, none of that. We're talking about being here for a cheat for the, for, the, for the rest of their time, the rest of their career. And it seems like they made that thing happen, man. So congratulations to the Kansas City Chiefs for getting these guys in here, get, you know, getting Chris Jones signed. Getting one of the best players in the NFL, one of the best in the NFL. Okay, it's going to Canton. It's going to be a, a, a first Hall of Fame, first ballot Hall of Famer, no doubt about it. Uh, and, and we got him here. We were talking about it. We, this is what we've been waiting on. So we we got our man. We got our guy. Ninety five sack nation. Uh, wonderful deal. Wonderful deal by the Chiefs. Okay. Britt Beach, uh, uh, Clark Hunt, Andy Reid, all the people, Spags, everybody involved in this to make this thing happen. Uh, hats off to each and every one of them. Congratulations. I've seen what Chris Jones said something to uh, Clark Hunt. And to me, that just shows me uh, Clark Hunt was the one that's like, sign this man. He, he, he made sure signing. I don't care what we're talking about. Sign Chris Jones. Clark Hunt probably made the phone call himself. Okay? So. What did, what did you think about the deal? Obviously, the way it broke down Saturday night, like like a, like a late night movie. I was I was about to pass out, <laughs> and Tasia calls me, goes, "Yo, you see the news?" I'm like, "Wait, what? Well, what, what's what's going on here?" And then I, I look at it, and you know, it's just crazy. But we didn't know the numbers till yesterday. That's when the, the numbers came out. But 
Obviously, you know, five years, 158 million. Uh, everyone's pretty much saying it's a three year, $95 million deal. It's 95 million guarantees. Um, highest paid deep fits a tackle in the league. Obviously, a lot of people were thinking, you know, with the, the that, that NFLPA thing that came out last week, oh, Clark Hunt's definitely not going to pay Chris Jones. He's going he's gonna, to he's gonna let him hit the open market. So glad that narrative m- might be uh, done for a little while as far as uh, our team, Clark Hunt being cheap. Um, he's still some stuff to do with facility wise. Yeah. But hey, at least he's paying the players what they're worth. What did you think about the deal with Chris Jones, the five years, $158 million and, the, and the guarantee aspect of it, making him the highest paid defensive tackle? Uh, you know, to me, um, it, it, he got everything that he wanted. I think not only did he get everything he wanted, uh, I think the Chiefs got everything they wanted too. For the simple fact that if you got a guy that you, you, you string him in for five years, so $95 million, without a doubt, is, is, is phenomenal. You know, to be able to get that in your pocket, knowing that $95 million is going to come to you, smack the rules, you know, obviously before the books and everything. But, hey, man, that, that's, that's an incredible deal. That's incredibly deal. So, for me, man, I, I thought it was, um, it was necessary. So, I thought, I thought it was necessary. Why would you let a guy like this go of, of this caliber that you know that uh, not only – is is he one of the best D line in the entire league? Uh, but he makes your entire defense better. He makes everybody around you better. He makes all the D line, the linebackers, the secondary. He makes everybody's job easier and better. And so, uh, not taking away from other guys and what they said, but we know he's a pivotal part for what the Chiefs do defensively. And it all starts with him. And so, when he's not in there, you could you could see some of the the impact of him not being in. Uh, because of his presence. But the way that they got to st- structure the deal, the five year 158, um, I mean, that's, I mean, come on. I mean, what else do you say to that? I mean, seriously, I don't think, because I think everybody was kind of, you know, jumping up and down like, oh, what side are you on? Okay, did he get too much or I won't go pay him this and all? You, you know, I, I don't think he's worth it or I don't think the Chiefs, look, none of that matters. What matters is winning championships, okay? Money's going to go up each and every year, all right? It is. So when you get to about year three, four, or five, you're going to realize, hey, man, this might be a, a, a good bargain deal for a guy of his caliber. What we've shown for the past two years, he has been absolutely dominant, okay? It's in the past three years, there, has not, there hasn't been anybody better in the past three years at the D-tackle D position. So let's just be honest here on talking about that. But – no, it was a great deal, man. I mean, getting to that. The 95 million, though, is the one that 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 you perk your eyes up and like, oh, okay. You know, 95 smack of rules. Good deal, man. That's, that's a hell of a deal right there. For, for me, it's like, you know, there's been times in the in the Chiefs history, like we know we, we didn't have like, you know, top echelon guys, right? But we wanted to keep our guys in house, so we pay these some guys to keep them. We pay them these astronomical, you know, deals that some guys may not have been worth that, right? But Jones is unique in the fact that we know what we're getting. We know who he is, so it's like you're paying for what you get. You know, when you, when you, when you, you know when you have services on your house, you know, and someone's you know doing the uh, redoing your, your lawn and stuff. You know, like you're paying for what you get. You might pay for the the, 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 the cheaper guy, but you're not going to get nearly the production you're going to get. You know, yeah. that, that the guy the guy you're paying the astronomical money to. And that's what Chris Jones is. I mean, like he's worth every penny, and we know what we're getting from him. And that's the thing. And like, and we're gonna keep him in the house. And that, and that, in this day and age, and the, the thing the other night I was talking about, in this day and age, it's so rare in sports where a guy will stay together with his team from from the jump. And I, I this offseason, we're seeing Chris Jones and Mike Evans as two guys who were ink who, who inked in with their team, and they're probably gonna be there till they retire. And that's. In this day and age of sports, you don't see that in NBA, NFL, MLB. You don't see that at all. And we potentially we got two, we have three dudes between Chris Jones, Mahomes, and Kelsey who could potentially be with this team from from draft night to the end. And I think that's that's really special. And then Clark Hunt's, you know, and I think uh, Ginger Girl says it here sends a strong message to the team that they are chasing that three peat. A hundred percent sends a strong message in many ways, but yes, that as well. Yeah. So. We, without a doubt, will not have three Super Bowl uh, wins under under this Andy Reid without Chris Jones. Just, nope. just wouldn't happen. 
And so he's a staple to what you do defensively, right? And we've seen guys come and go from different positions, okay? Uh, whether it be in the secondary, like, uh, you know, Honey Badger, okay? You know, we could talk, you know, linebackers or D-line, okay? And so the thing is, the constant person that's been here, the consistent guy has been Chris Jones. He has been the one that you you had to build your defense around, okay? Because he could give you so much. You, you have so many possibilities, with Chris Jones, you can do a guy that takes on double teams almost every single play. Okay. Uh, and I made this point uh, early to my boy Keys. You know, we're just kind of talking. I'm catching up to, you know, some of the conversation. Uh, but I was saying it's not really, you know, kind of a give, give and take comparison. But they were obviously, we're talking about Sneed and, you know, what, what we're going to do with Sneed, how it's going to work out, if he's going to get, you know, traded, whatever. Okay. And I was making a case that, look, we, we have guys that can fill in, okay, if Snead's gone. Will they give us what Snead has from the from what he gave last year? This, this it was remains to be seen, okay? Remains to be seen. But what we do know is that it's hard to mimic what Chris Jones does on the field from anybody in the NFL, okay? Not alone on our team. I'm just talking from anybody in the NFL. The only one that comes to my mind immediately off my head is Aaron Donald, right? We were sitting there talking about defensive tackles, Aaron Donald. And these other guys' names that come up, Williams and all. Hey, they're, they're, they're solid guys, okay? Take nothing from them because they're, 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 they're beasts up there, all right? My absolute monsters. But the way that Chris Jones can change the trajectory of a game, okay? And we've seen it the past few years. I think – you there's only a few guys you could you could say that and you can name probably on your hand they can do it on defensive defensive side of the ball really tj watt is another guy we know because of the, you know what he does what he brings to the table i mean it's like okay this you know this dude is he's a he's a phenomenal guy okay yeah. bosa nick you know he does his thing when he comes in and he makes some plays that you know it's like okay this is exciting phenomenal right parsons parsons yeah and so but but some of these guys are limited on what you do. Like we say Parsons, right? Parsons, great pass rusher. But you run straight at him, mm. you nullify everything he does in the, <laughs> yeah. the passing game, right? I mean, you see, he just disappears in the game sometimes. And you wonder, like, what? Well, wait a minute, hold on. How is this happening? Well, you, you game plan for this. Chris Jones uh, routinely takes on double teams, sometimes triple teams. And he's still getting in. He's still getting pressure. He's still on the quarterback. And I'm talking about – him being tackled, I'm being grabbed, I mean, around the waist. I mean, it's like blatantly holding calls on in practically every, every single play. And they never call it. They never call it, okay? But that's how dominant he is. I think, you know, referees look at it like, well, shoot, he's a big guy. He can handle himself. He's killing this dude. Yeah. Right? I, we try to make it a little bit fair, you know? I know Chris Jones, 95, whoever he is, what's his name? Chris Jones on the side killing him. Let's give this guy, let's give him a chance. Yeah. Chris just eating at lunch all the time. So that's what I was saying. Like, you, we, we talk about the scope of what he actually brings to the table on this defense. Uh, I, you, you just can't replicate it. You can't on the D line. You just cannot, especially from that position, from defensive tackle. So, yeah, this is, they, they are serious about a three P. They're serious more about a three P. We're talking about three, four, five. We're trying to put this. Get a guy like this for five years. These next five years, you still trying to get rings. You trying to? And I see everybody else is trying to jump on. Look, there was a lot of movement this past weekend. You know why? Because they thinking about trying to get to the Super Bowl. You know who was the standard? The Kansas City Chiefs are. Okay, when you sitting over setting up the barometer of what goes on in NFL, you got to say, okay, how do we get past our division? Okay, how do we get past our conference? And then the championship game, how do we get past the Chiefs? Okay. Because that's what we have to we have to see. Like it or not, I don't care what anybody else says. For the past few years, the Chiefs have been dominant. Okay. Five years, four Super Bowls, okay, three winners. Okay. That's what you see with the Chiefs. Yeah. So we are the standard in the NFL. We are. So you better get who you can. I see Saquon go to Philly, Swift go to Detroit. Everybody sitting over there, man, 
everybody is gunning for the Chiefs. And if you don't think they're not, shoot, you watch how everything was rolling. I, I think I seen somebody was saying in the chat uh, that Chris is going to be the most coveted uh, free agent out there. You best believe it. I guarantee if that's something hit the, the free uh, uh, hit the market, whoo, this phone would have been blowing up. Well, that, well, that's why the um, there was that report last week that the Raiders were interested in, in Chris Jones. Today, uh, the one of the first signings, right when everything started today, was them signing the DTAC from Miami, Christian Wilkins, and they paid him like eighty-four million dollars in guarantee. So it, it t- tells you they were really go- they were going to go for him if he was going to be uh, available. They were going to throw him whatever they took. Um, and they got Christian Wilkins, not, not a bad consolation prize, but it's not Chris Jones. No, uh-uh. so <laughs> it, 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 as they should have, they should come on if you want to win games. You're going to get the best. Why yeah. not try to get the best? So, get, Getting Jones, the best and also subtracting one of the best from the team that everyone's trying to chase. Oh, yeah. 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 So, uh, Mike's saying he would have been offered more than 95, I would uh, I would guess. Yeah, no, for 100%. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing, too. It, it, the winning's addictive. So uh, if they do win this 3 P, they're going to come back and say, oh, we got, we got to do four. We got to do four. And it's something that's never been done in, like, almost any sport, the, four, the four-P. I don't know. Actually, has four-P ever been done? That never, that's never been done. Yeah, yeah. Celtics, Celtics maybe back in the day uh, with Bill Russell and them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> my, yeah. Yeah. That could have happened back then because it wasn't yeah. like, a championship, something like that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, I mean that's, that's pretty much it, though. So, I mean, yeah, let's, we'll start with the three P that we can talk about four P after that. <laughs> so, so my man had he okay. So, this is always a concern, right? I'm the Brown, my man. I see they said, I always fear when a defensive person gets a big contract, so many of them start taking plays off because they know they got the payday, okay? So, it, I'll say this. We have seen this before. We have seen guys kind of slow down or whatever, kind of sit back on their laws and like, oh, I made it. I'm good. I'm going to chill out. Okay? My thing is, with Chris Jones, he, the Chiefs in a position to do something that has never been done in the NFL. Okay? And that's the three P. Without a doubt, I think they're trying to stake if they're probably the, the 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 best team they put together with Andy Reid under his his watch since Belichick and the the, uh, the Patriots, okay, and so I don't see Chris Jones doing any of those things as far as like slowing down. All right, now and obviously he wants to preserve his body, which he should, and this kind of goes into the case I'm gonna make about getting somebody beside him at the defensive tackle that's going to be able to help him out. To help in his production, his longevity, all those different things. That way, you don't have to keep taking two uh, uh, double and triple teams all the time, all right? That way, you can free up guys getting one on one with, you know, a minute who, or you get it with Kolopkis, you know, and it, those guys, and, and, and Phoenix, and all the other guys who's going who you gonna have around, him, right? You know, I love the blitzing. The reason the blitz is able to work the way it's able to work because Chris Jones takes two, right? You can't account and say, hey, I'm going to leave him and go after the blitz guy. You can make him in account if you want to. But now Chris Jones has single guy, guard or somebody, and you know it's going to be a tough guy. And he, he's going to win that every time. So my thing is, if we're deciding to go get a guy, I would say go get somebody beside him as well, Okay. So who could compliment him? We have the outside pieces, okay? Yep. We, we, we built that up, right? The interior is something that we've been kind of playing musical chairs with, right? Hasn't been somebody who, who, who's who been a staple with Chris Jones. Now, Nandi came in, he ended up getting hurt. Dude, he had a pretty decent year last year, okay? Yeah. Mike Pinnell with his big arm, big arm joker, okay? <laughs> Did a heck of a job when he came in. He's, he's toward the end of the season. You start, you start seeing him starting to bench press jokers, all right? What you wanted to be able to see. You need a more consistent guy there. Tayshawn wants, you need a more consistent guy. He had flashes of, of greatness, the things that he was doing. That was like, okay, hey, you need to step your game up. Uh-huh. But you need a more consistent guy beside Chris Jones that you will just absolutely become more dangerous than what you were. Yeah. To the point where you know you get another guy you are, there's no doubt you're going to be the number one defense in the league. 
okay? And we should have probably got those accolades all last year that people just didn't recognize how good we were. Just didn't, yeah. you won't give it to us. Just didn't want to do it. So, yeah, and also too, uh, and we talked about this on the, on the offensive end as far as with the receivers having a veteran presence in there. And I think with this with five year deal, they say it was, it's pretty much a three year, $95 million deal, whatever. So three years of Chris Jones, three years guarantee with Chris Jones, five years. If we want if we, if we want to continue this, um, but you have Chris Jones there and let's say we draft, and this is a very, it's a pretty good defensive tackle draft. Let's say in the first or early second, we draft a D tackle. Not yeah. only do you have a, a young buck that Chris Jones can groom, but you have a blue chipper that you can have fi- a finally a blue chip D tackle next to him that can cause havoc with him. Kind of like the guy that you want us to draft last year, Kobe Turner, who the Rams got and tore up this year next to Aaron Donald. So, I mean, I, I think I think to have a young guy to come in this year in the top two rounds to, to, to have next to him would be unreal. Oh, man. A- absolutely unreal. Absolutely unreal. Uh, hopefully that 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 is what's going to happen. Now, and obviously, look, okay, I was playing GM earlier today, all right? I was talking to one of my boys, me and Barbershop was 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 having a good conversation about a few things, a few scenarios, all right, which was very uh-huh. entertaining to even think about it, okay? Uh, and so we were saying, okay, some of these possibilities that could happen, right? Obviously, everybody everybody's playing GM. Some GMs didn't even want Chris Jones, so I'm, you know, I, I'm not even going to give that, <laughs> you know, let me in. But... If if there is if if there was a pathway, like you said, to get maybe you Chris know, Jenkins it, Jr. Who's that? Chris Jenkins Jr. The D tackle. Chris Jenkins Jr. Okay, uh, there's a couple other guys too, but I was just going to say extra picks that we could possibly get. All right, with the whole you know, if if we don't we, we decide not to keep Snead, okay, right. that's the you know the conversation. Um. There's going to be some work that's going on in these next few days uh, that's going to be able to tell the tale about what it is, what we're going to do. Yeah. But I do believe that we have to go and get us a defensive tackle early on in the draft. I do. Has has to be three three rounds or earlier. Has to be. You have to do that. Uh, and, and there is a lot of good D tackles out there in, in, right now. Okay? Yeah. And we, we, we can't miss on one. We just can't. We can't do that. All right? Um, and here, here's and, and and not even let's just say you get a guy if heaven forbid that something happens to Chris Jones, heaven forbid something happens to him, right? You make sure you get a guy that's going to be able to come in and take up the mantle, yeah, somehow. Maybe not get the same, but enough of it, all right? And then you can make everybody else around him eat like they still do. Like it, our guy's getting better every, every year, right? Yeah, Pilot is getting better every single year, okay. I'm looking for Felix to get better this co- upcoming year. All right, mm-hmm. he's got a, he's got a year on his belt. I'm looking for big things from him this year. Yep. He's gonna be able to show it because Charles is gonna be on the sideline for a little bit, still with his injury until he gets back. So make sure you have a good mix, somebody inside that you're evaluating that's gonna be able to to yeah give you pressure, run stopper, high motor, a uh, very powerful guy. You got to have that. You have yep. to. Uh, and I'm looking at it right now for the guys that's coming out in, in this draft. There's at least, from what I've seen so far, at least six or seven quality guys, okay? Six or seven quality guys, no doubt. That I can say, hey, you can plug this guy in day one. He can learn from Chris Jones. This guy's going to be a terror, all right? Yeah. So that's where I'm looking at right now. Yeah, so in this episode, uh, JD and I are going to go over the free agents that we have at the at these the defensive line positions, and then we're also going to go over who we have in the room to also pretty much back what we're just talking about here as far as needing another guy with Chris Jones because right now, guys, in that defensive tackle room, it's thin. It's very thin. So um, yeah, the draft's going to be huge as far as, far as that goes, um, and also potentially um, free agency too. Um, yeah, so we're, we're going to go into that right now. Um. All right. So these are our free agents right now. Um. This is all the guys that we had like the, the cap to. Um. And we had money uh, that dedicated to last year. The Pinnell signs at the end of the season. Um. 
So Pinnell is also another another guy who's a free agent too. I didn't add him to the list because he wasn't as far as a cap hit for the Chiefs um, yeah. last year. Um, but JD, I mean, talk about Naughty who had yeah, an up and down career in Kansas City. Um, this past year, probably his best year. No, no coincidence that it was his contract year. Um, uh, Tershawn Wharton, uh, who was solid. Uh, Mike Dana, who was played amazingly. And one thing I'll say between Wharton and Dana, uh, not Herring so much, but Wharton and Dana, they both played inside and outside. So they were, they, they were mixing a DT and DN. That's one thing I will say as far as, like, when we do look at a potential guy to play next to uh, Chris Jones, will it be just a straight-up DT guy or it's going to be a guy who can play a little bit of both? So that will be curious to see what we do in the draft. Uh, and then Malik Herring's another guy who's a free agent. Uh, JD, what do you make of um, of these guys who are potentially going to get the bag this week? So, you know, all these guys right here um, I, did a good job for us, right? They they show flashes of uh, uh, professionalism, uh, ability, uh, and did everything we asked them to do. They they really did. And ninety, you know, him, you know, getting hurt, which is unfortunate. Uh, you know, in, in, in this season, uh, he was having his best year. And so uh, I, w- I was really impressed with him. I was really impressed with Nandi. Okay. Uh, you know me, I was, I was, you know, I, I'm one of those things. Look, I'm, I'm be realistic about things. Uh, you know, what I'm expecting from a defensive tackle. All right. As a guy that plays offense, as a, as a guy that I know evaluation that, that actually used to play defense being in college. Um, you know, there's there's certain things I, I want from defensive tackles and defensive ends. Okay, I, I just I just know that. And one of the, you know I, I named it before. I, I need push. I need speed. I need power. Okay, I need for guys to to be able to 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 stop the run. And when the pass game, I need it for you to get pressures. Okay, and get sacks. All right. So you could go through the numbers, but but Nandi did a decent job for us. Uh, you know, Tershawn, He you know he he came in and he he did some had some flashes of, of brilliancy, you know, because when I was going back over the tape, I'm like, okay, it's Deshaun making that play. Like, it's, it's, it's a good job. Now, sometimes I would see, you know, because uh, Deshaun is more, like you said, he went inside and outside, more of an undersized defensive tackle, right? But that gives us to his versatility because he, he can go in and out. But when you, you come on, you know, the run game and you got bigger guys in front of you, double team. Then you got to be able to hunker down. And sometimes he would get, you know, knocked off the ball. But it, it is because, you know, when when you're looking at it, he may not necessarily have the size to deal with those double teams like that on their side against big jokers that are pushing on, especially two of them at one time. Uh, so that, that was that was a little bit of that that he, he might have struggled with that. But he had flashes of it. Uh, Dan, it, man, you know, shoot. I, I love everything that everybody said about Dan. Okay. Not just what he did out there on the field, but you could tell how guys felt about him in the locker room. All right. How much of a workhorse. Uh his 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 modesty. You know, him coming today every single day with his hard hat and and lunch pail, just going to work. And they knew it. Every, you see everybody giving him his flowers, just talking about him. You know, his disposition, how he carried himself. And so you you talking about somebody who was a consummate teammate, all right? So it, Dana is that guy, okay? So you got you cheer for a guy like Dan, you, you you do every time he came in, he'll, he'll make he make plays, you know. He's chasing guys down. He's that effort guy that you, you're gonna get, right? Same thing, little undersized. So that was a little bit, you know, kind of knock on him because you try to run straight at him. You know, he's trying to hold, you know, uh, you know, hold an anchor when he can. All right, but teams know, hey, look, if I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to run after him, let's run straight at this guy, okay, because he's more of an undersized defensive end. Uh, but Dana did a, a tremendous job for him, man. I, I hope, you know, however things work out, I don't know how, how it's going to work out, but I just wish the best, not just for Dana, but Warrington and Nandi. So we, we don't know how this the, the future holds for them. Herring, now uh, Malik. Correction on uh, Herring. Um, at, when I made this graphic earlier, he was, a, he was an exclusive rights-free agent. Uh, since then, as of a couple hours ago, uh, he is re-signed to the team. Uh, so he's no longer a free agent. So he'll be on the team next year. <laughs> there Say you it go. again. 
You say so Herring, Herring will be on the team next year. He was an exclusive okay. rights free agent. Yeah. They tendered him, and he's back on the squad as of a couple hours ago. <laughs> Good, Herring. Go ahead. Make, make, make your money, baby. Good, <laughs> Good to see you back, brother. Okay? And the, 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 the little mix of it. All right? Then we talk about Mike Pinnell. All right? We're talking about a guy that came in who used to be here with the Chiefs uh, that, to me, had a lot of ability. I think he had a lot of push in him, and I wanted to see more from him. Then we started seeing a little bit more of that toward the end of the year, him starting to get acclimated back into, you know, the swing of things. And I think sometimes you got to know who you are, right? And you can, you can, you can, you can move through this league and just be okay and just kind of say, hey, I'm just going to get mine. But then sometimes you just got to show up. And I see Mike do that, you know, during the playoffs, some of the other games, I'm like, that's why I got them on for a reason. You got them in, in big jokers. Them treat, man, let them suckers fly. Let them fly. Right? And so he was doing that. Uh, but that's what I wanted to, I wanted to be see out of Mike. And so uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see. He's another piece that can give just for depth. Uh, I like Mike a lot. I like Mike a lot. And so what I've seen him at the end of the season is promising, saying this is a guy that probably needs another shot, another chance here with the Chiefs. Okay? Uh, so, uh, that's my assessment there. That's my assessment. And, and if I'm looking at this, just D line wise, okay. Nine D warranting those guys. And I'm, we're talking about caliber guys trying to get up there to where Chris Jones is, right? Chris Jones is they, these guys played their part, did a good job. Uh, can we get a guy in the draft that's going to be able to equal or be better than what these guys gave? And I think we can. I do. All right. Yeah. So and I think Dan is gonna get a big contract from some team here. He 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 really showed his his uh, his value this year and his performance in play uh with the games when you know when Omena who was out, when Chris Jones was out, I mean he stepped up inside and outside and for for about two years straight he, he's done this and he was a nice value pick that we got late in the draft a couple years back. So I mean he's really played his ass off and he's gonna get paid. And so congrats to him. Yeah. So my thing is, I hope he does too. I hope he does too. You know, obviously the thing is they, they try to use the size against him. You know, how good is he against the run? Is he going to be like all the things I talked about? Is he going to be an anchor? Does he got some lead in his tail, you know, to do what he needs to do? Okay. And we know my, you know, he's capable. We know that. Yeah. So yeah, definitely. So we're going to go to our guys on the roster. So we kind of hinted at this uh, earlier as to um, the guys on the roster right now and how we are very thin in a certain position, the D-tackle spot. But we're going to go to cap hits. As of right now, I don't have uh, Malik Herrings in there, um, but I can't imagine it's going to be – it'll probably be towards the bottom of of this list as far as his cap hit for uh, next season. Uh, But so far, Charles Menehu. Uh, our guy who uh, promoted the episode tonight, Charles. Shout out, buddy, if you're if you're watching this. Um, a ten point nine million dollar cap hit for this upcoming season, reported, and he out of his mouth, he wants a new new deal. He thinks he uh, showed up uh, enough this year to uh, get earn a new contract. And hey, I'm all about extending him and keeping him around for for a couple more years. Um, hopefully his uh, hopefully he um, you know recovers well from his ACL injury. But then Chris Jones, seven point three million dollar cap hit. So like you know he's delaying the the big time cap hit. So maybe we can bring in some guys this uh, this coming uh, off season here. Um, George Carlos, three point two mil. Uh, King Felix, two point six mil. Isaiah Bugs, one point one mil. Neil Farrell Jr., nine hundred eighty five k. Um, Matt Dickerson, nine hundred eighty five k. Uh, BJ Thompson, nine eighty two k. Jordan Smith, the new guy we added, uh, 915, and then Sherman Jones, 795. But one thing that stands out here to me, J.D., and I'll, I'll let you take take over here, is the 3D tackles. It's Jones, it's Bugs, it's Farrell. That's not – I mean, those, those aren't needle movers um, at, at, alongside Chris Jones. We need we, we need a little bit of something. And I know the one beauty about FAU is the fact that you can play inside, outside with him, uh, but – we need it. We need a guy in there, and that, that's why me. I know a lot of people are saying, "Oh, we don't need to tackle anymore. Take that. Take that off the board for a high pick for us." Like, no, 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 not at all. I, that it's still so has good. to be. You take BPA D tackle if it, if the best guys on the board there at, at thirty two. If we get another pick in the uh, in this first round or second round, you look at D tackle here. You got to go D tackle the first three rounds. That, that, that's that, that's where I'm at with it. But yeah, because right now with with that list of guys next to Chris Jones, 
I mean, it's going to be business as usual with having a kind of a, a question mark in that D tackle spot next to Chris Jones. And I, I don't want a question mark there anymore. I want to, I want a guy who can take over if Chris Jones is there, uh, you know, taking a break, uh, taking a playoff or two for Cause he's gassed or not. I want a guy next to him. So that, that's where, that, that's where I'm at with this. Yeah. So, so, so I'm looking, I'm looking at this list right here. Okay. Um, uh, I'm agreeing with you. Uh, I don't know much about bugs, okay? Uh, but like you're saying, if, we, if we're looking to try to get somebody, I think we should go somebody uh, in the draft early. I do. And not taking away from these guys right here, but you're going to have somebody who's fresh, who's locked in, that you're going to have for a number of years. That's going to be, like I said, right beside Chris Jones, Right. So you don't have to play musical chairs and you're looking for a guy that's going to be able here to be disruptive as soon as he gets in the, in the building. Okay. I want to come into the building and kick something over. Just turns immediately lock up with an uh, O-line. How about that? Just, I don't know, just grab Freed or, or Trey Smith. As soon as you come in, like, they, you know, just tussle with them. Just, you know, just, okay. See what, see what this guy's got. Right. Uh, and I like that idea. Uh, but you, you got to have somebody, man, who's a dog up front. Okay, not saying these guys are not, but if, you, if these guys, I'm looking at these are holes that's being filled. This this is this is a filler of the holes, right? Before what I'm seeing on there. Now Jermaine Jones, I think somebody has said the same thing. Or no, Thompson, Thompson, this guy, BJ, put a little weight on, raw athletic ability. I think he could be a problem. I think he could develop a guy like that. You know who I did like? I like Dickerson a lot. To me, Dickerson, at times he would he, he would. He would flash and then he'd kind of disappear. And it was like, man, it's another one thing, consistency. It's all about consistency, baby. So when you're doing evaluation, I remember I learned this a long time when, you know, we're looking at the practical things. How I'm answering a question about when you come in, I should never have a question about you doing your job, okay, and doing your job well, all right? And if I'm watching some of the film from this past year, and I'm just doing evaluation. Sometimes question marks come when when I'm seeing maybe some of the things that guys are not doing well, uh, technique wise, or maybe not be able to come off the ball explosively or using their hands the way that they should. Okay, and so as an evaluator, that I'm I'm I'm, I'm being a little critical on that. I'm like, okay, man, what, how come this guy's not doing the consistency? What we need to do to find out for you to be on a more consistent basis on beating a guy one on one. Or double teams, or holding a guy down. If you're if you're going against a run, how come you're not anchoring? How come is it that you're getting blown off the ball for a couple of two or three yards to send our linebackers' legs? Okay, that compromises what you do defensively. You don't want nothing to happen like that to happen. So that the evaluation has to be strenuous. I mean, you have to go through it, and I'm talking about sifting through it. I, I mean, seriously. Okay, and so every year you're gonna have guys on a team. A lot of defensive ends, a lot of defensive tackles, okay? And it starts dwindling down during training camp and when the cuts start coming in because you start seeing, like, okay, I need a guy to start consistently making plays. That's what we need to see. So you could you could be on a team, but you, you need consistency, my man. That's, that's, that's all it boils down to, okay? Doing what you're supposed to do when I ask you to do it, all right? More importantly, dominating when you're out there, right? If I see flashes and you dominating, like I said before, if I see you do it one time, then I know you can do it 10 other times, right? And you should. If you're not, then that's an issue. So we, we, we got we to gotta make sure that when we're doing an evaluation, a full evaluation, as much as we like guys be on a team, as, as me as an evaluator, as a coach, and a guy that play offense, I'm looking for a particular, okay, to fit that mode, to fit that bill, playing those positions right so yeah you mentioned bugs uh so bugs i mean he's, he's journeyman he's been around the league for a little while uh six round pick from alabama i mean he's enormous <laughs> six three 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 thirty five is, is what his height and weight is i mean he's he's a, big, he's a big guy um so like i would i mean obviously he's on the roster right now so i mean that, that's a good guy as a rotational other d tackle okay. they let's say they don't bring back Pinnell. Okay, well, maybe he can fill in that rotational detail, de tackle spot. Just plug, just plug him a hole. I see uh, Omar Bugs is a big body hole stuffer. I mean, yeah, he, he is. 
Um, I, I love that comment. But um, yeah, you, you have him, and then and then you go ahead and draft uh, a D tackle. And one thing that we haven't discussed is we, we got the D tackle spot. Obviously, we we were, we're in agreement that we need a D tackle. The Omenahu aspect. Omenahu's torn ACL. That's gonna be he's gonna be out for a good while, ha- at least at least half the season. Hopefully, hopefully he recovers faster than that. But I also I also don't want the guy to rush back if he's not right. But a man who's gone, or for at least fat half the season, Dana potentially won't be here next year. So we're looking at the guys who were actually going to play the DN spot. Well, as of right now, Dana's not going to be here next year. I think he's going to get the bag somewhere else. That's why I'm predicting they probably won't be here next year. But Carl mm-hmm. Loftus, FAU. I mean, then the Herring. So that's three guys who've been rot- rotational guys here. And, and FAU, I'm only a spot rotational guy. I mean, it wasn't until the end of the season where he got some uh, some snaps after the early early part of the season. But yeah. then the other guys here, I mean, Dickerson, I mean, he could play, he's playing a tweener D tackle DN spot. BJ Thompson, we're hoping he gains some weight this offseason. I honestly wouldn't mind, not early round, but I would say th- round three to five going to get another edge rusher because, like, we always talk about, you can never have enough of those guys. You can never have enough of them. You can never have enough. So if you just get a, a pass rush specialist, I, I like that. I do like that. Uh, and I'm right there with you. I think we do need another defensive end. And so, yeah, BJ is he, he's, he's he's a work in progress. He's a, he's he's a project. But if he can get on it and just like, because he has athletic ability, that's a good thing about it. So you can build on that. That's that's what I love about it more than so than anything else. Because he's an athlete. It's okay. Well, shoot, let me take an athlete and let me mold him to what I want him to do. Yeah. Just watch the athlete come out of him and then let him let him thrive. Mm-hmm. Okay, let him out there thrive. Um, but I, I was kind of reading a little bit. You know, we were talking about defensive ends. Um, I was telling you, I didn't know too much about Bugs. And I, and I was kind of looking over here what Dan Campbell was saying about Bugs, why he got released, why he's a healthy scratch, and all those different things. You know what I mean? So what that's he, why. I, what was he saying? I, mean, I, I don't really know much about his, uh, his background, well, why he got so, released. Well, Dan Campbell, I guess he said, yeah, I mean, look, those things were, when, there, when those things happen, nothing about it is easy. But it's just, it, it was the best thing for us and for him. So I wish him the best of luck, Campbell said. So I, mm-hmm. somehow it didn't work out. It didn't work out up there in Detroit, all right? Hopefully it works out here. Hopefully he got a new home and he, he, he has a fit that he's like, okay, I can I can do my damage here. Maybe maybe this move is what's going to bring him back. Maybe, maybe revitalize his career, okay? Because sometimes what ends up happening, if, if a guy goes somewhere and he's not getting appreciated or he feels sometimes slighted or he's not getting his opportunities, uh, they can go on the tape. They can. You can become disgruntled. But then if somebody takes a, a chance on you, like, hey, man, come over here. Sure, we we want you. All right? We need you. Sometimes everybody just want to feel wanted. Right? Yeah, Sometimes it's like that. Yeah, man, warm and fuzzy. Pat you on your back. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, bring you a, a nice blanket if you need to. You know, somebody make you feel nice and, and fuzzy. Right? Yeah. So maybe maybe he revitalized his, his, his career here. But defensive ends, I told you this. You have to be in the NFL. You, you, for the life of me, how much they pass in the ball. You got to be around seven, eight sacks a year, at least. At least that. Can these guys give you that? Can Thompson give you that as an athlete? Yeah. Hey, man. Go get the guy with the football. Mm-hmm. When your time comes in, go get it. I could see a guy like that building him up, getting him stronger, and him becoming something of, of that terror as a defensive end. Uh, my thing is, yeah, do you go back in the, in, 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 the, in the draft, get somebody? I think you do, Marcus. I agree with you. I do agree with you. I do agree with you. So there, there's a guy from obviously I haven't done much draft research yet. I'm waiting. I'm, I'm waiting till yeah. So I want to be able to get a good vision. And everyone's like saying, oh, what what, what are you what, what guys you looking at in the draft? It's like I want to get a good v- vision of what we're going to attack in the off season as far as free agency signings right now. And then once I get a good picture over the next two three weeks, that's when I'll kind of do a little deep dive. But what the one stands out with me is DT and then DN with this whole uh, Omena who not going to be there. And then if we don't sign. Dana, that's we're down two edge rushes from last year. So it's like, okay, we do need to fill in a, a little bit here. 
Um, and the well, one guy that a lot of people, a lot of obviously, you know, we've talked about before that usually Kansas City, the scout, the scouting department, they like to prioritize that mid, mid Missouri, Kansas area. And the one guy that everyone's kind of um, uh, talking about is it's, what's his name? It's um, gosh, uh, the, the the Missouri DN. Uh, so I, for us, first name, his last name's Robinson, I believe. Um, but he's a guy who can play inside and outside. And a lot of people are, are, are loving him. I think he ran a sub 540. So, I mean, and he, he's a, He's a guy a lot of people are talking about, a guy who can play a little bit of DN, a little bit of D-tackle. Okay. Uh, you, you're going to be a hybrid guy, man. Make sure you're going to be somebody who's who's uh, who's a monster hybrid, okay? Not, we're just not looking for fillers, okay? I don't think the Chiefs need to just go filling for bodies. I, we, we need to go get a guy. I don't, I don't know too much. Uh, Darius Robinson. I'm having to look him up. Yeah, a, yeah. I, I, look, I don't know anything about him. I might have to look him up and see, uh, but that, that'd be good something. Should you get somebody, you know, from you know around this this area? Um, it, that, I mean, I think that'd be good. So they, yeah, they, they love drafting those type of guys. The Kansas State, Missouri, Kansas Jayhawk guys. They love they love that <laughs> as they should, as they should, because these guys got a little bit uh, more incentive to them. That you know, you playing for your home the home team or home squad the people you around. Shoot, show out, right? Show yeah. out. So. Yeah, he's a uh, uh, Darius Robinson, uh, measurable 6'5", 296. Um, so he's, mm. he's, he's a big guy. And I think he ran like a four right. nine four forty, I believe. Not bad. Not I'll bad take it. Four nine four. That size? Oof. Yeah, I'll take it. I'll take it. Four nine four four eight have been even better. He ran a four eight. Go get him. Sign him up. Right. <laughs> he, <laughs> but, but I, I don't think he, he won't be a late first round pick if that if that's the, if that was the case though. If he was running four eight. <laughs> well, look, I, I you know hey. I don't matter if them guys run a four nine five. If you got if you ain't got get off, take off, and you ain't got power in your hands, ain't gonna it. yeah, I don't care. I don't care how fast you are. <laughs> Shoot, I just need for you to get, you know, ten yards. What's your ten yards gonna be like? Mm-hmm. Get to the quarterback, right? That's what I yeah. need to see. Can you can you bench press a tackle and a guard? Can you take two guys a double team? Can you do that? Can you throw a couple guys, you know, out of your way, shed, come off, and make a play? Okay, that's what I want to see. All right. So I'll, I'll look over his film and check him out. So yeah, I'm curious because that is a guy. Obviously, I mean, we talk about the the need for the position. A guy who can play a little bit of inside and outside, which sounds like a Dana type of thing, and he, but he's obviously bigger than than Dana. But a guy who can play a little bit of, of everything. Omena, who's also another guy you can put inside and outside. So and he's not going to be there. The and when we're talking about having another or another guy in our arsenal as far as D tackle wise as well. So like he kind of checks off two boxes, and we met with him at the combine too. So that's a guy we're obviously interested in. Um, so yeah, it's, it, do you see if we were to kind of go for a DN type, would this be kind of the guy? Not not this guy in particular, but a guy who can do a little bit of D tackle and DN, not just not just like a BJ Thompson type, who's just a pass rusher. I kind of a guy who can fill in at D tackle and DM who's done it before. I, I think you do because that, that, you know, gives you some versatility. Okay. It, it, it does do that. And so, um, I get creative to what a guy can do something like that. Um, uh, you can hit two birds with one stone. That's the way I look at it. Right. Uh, and if he needs to take off reps or get a rep for a guy, that's what you do. Um, Sometimes what what you may find is with some tweeners, they kind of get lost because it's like they're not very good at pass rush and they're maybe very good at, at the run. You don't want to you don't want to do that where you just have a guy who's just okay at these both positions. No, you want him to be stellar at maybe one particular thing, and the other one he, you know he's still trying to work on, right? So, um, and the reason I'm saying it is well. You put him out in defensive end, then he's not getting no, he ain't getting no pressures, he ain't getting no sacks. You just put him out there. Yeah. What good is that? That's a waste of rep. You know, we don't want waste of reps. A minute who came in, yeah, you know, that's a long joker. When you see him come in, he he was able to take on, you know, guards being a defensive tackle, right? Shed them and get around them with his quickness. He's able to go out there defensive end, shed, get around tackles. So very effective on both on both ends, right? Just like Chris Jones. So when you see that, you look for a body type where a guy is, you know, they're longer in stature, long arms, uh, very athletic, 
uh, really, you know, swiveling the hips and got good hands and, you know, and just, you know, get around guys. Okay. If you want to be able to generate pressure from wherever you are on the defensive line, it doesn't matter. If you're inside, outside, wherever it is, you got to be make sure uh, that it's going to be a hard deal dealing with you. Right. So that's my thing. I just, just getting a guy, uh, because look, man, we, we look, it happens every year. Sometimes the college things don't work out and guys may not be who you think they are, uh, when they get to the NFL. It's the reality, man. Yeah. So, uh, you, you might look good in college against somebody who's going to become an accountant, right? <laughs> oh man, he, he was killing such and such. This stuff is going over here, uh, you know, to be a social worker at, at this football career is over. <laughs> How good is he? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's it's good to evaluate against top notch talent. Mm-hmm. It really is. And so I want to make sure when I'm watching, like I said, the combine, we're watching the film of what you did out during the season. Hey, you two right here got it. They got to match up. They got to yep. be synonymous. Okay. Or if you was at the, you know, at the senior bowl, I don't want to. I want to show all evaluations that you are that guy. Okay, you are that guy. But uh, if you're going good against Mary Sisters of the Poor, you post a killer. <laughs> you up to. I mean, you know. It's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. D line coach, uh, coach, uh, coach Tenero from EKU. I get you. See, I got my EKU grid here on the day. <laughs> coach Tenero say, man, you know, I do. Man, looks like Tarzan plays like Jane. Yeah, <laughs> looks like looks like Target playing Jane. Well, you look at him. Oh man, he's uh, muscles popping out everywhere. And, you know, he's. Just, I mean, he looks the part. And then you get him out there, and and you know, you play like Jane. He hitting the hands like this, and can't get off a block. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. So we don't need to look like Tarzan play like Jane. Very old guy. Okay. We we yep. need we need straight dogs here who's coming in or hungry who's gonna eat, period. Mm-hmm. Okay. I, I love that Tarzan Jane uh right there. That's uh like the, the layman version of that would be uh when when in high school and we see dudes um like the first day of like the like freshman year of football. You have guys who you know eighth grade, they were they were dominant in like flag football gym class. We call those guys gym class heroes. They come out of the field and never put pads on before and they, they don't they don't know what the heck's going on. And that's it. Oh. And then they they quit a week later. Oh yeah, yeah. Or, or all American pat- uh, practice players. <laughs> yeah. So could be out there, man, with the with the with the little dummy in his hand. He wearing that by yeah, wow. I'm like, oh shoot! Like we got to get, get something suited up. You know, on Saturday or Sunday, he come out there and start getting ran over. For him. Oh man, he like oh, shoot. And you got the coaches like hyping him up, like, oh, you're you're gonna let so and so do that to you? You're gonna right, let him right. do that? Everyone's like, hyping him, like, yeah, he's got you. Yeah. Like, hey, man, you come over here and have a seat. You have a seat. <laughs> You're out there getting your ass kicked out here right now. Embarrassing yourself, okay? <laughs> you no idea how embarrassed you should be right now. So, nah, it's no, nah, it's it's all good, man. We 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 just need to find, and we know this. Like I seen, I think uh, somebody was talking. Wendy was saying this that Veach does a good job of finding diamonds in the rough. Okay, yeah. So we we're gonna look for our, our scouts and everybody to get out there. Um, you know, scouting department to go do their jobs. Go get us some guys, okay? Mm-hmm. Defensive tackle, defensive end. We, you know, we need a couple of them. We need a couple, right? So yeah, the um, the one thing I wanted to uh, bring up here before we exit tonight, um, I, I mentioned it earlier. So obviously we had Joe Menahu, I, I brought. We talked about that earlier. He gave us a nice little promotion for the episode tonight. So Charles, I appreciate you, brother. Um, may he. I, Oh. We're, gonna be, we're gonna be good trust. I mean, he's right. I, we are gonna be good. We made a little tinkering here and there, some additions to uh make up for some of the losses. But yeah, for the most part, yeah, that we're gonna be solid this year. Um, yeah. Chuck, telling you right now, baby. Look, we ain't got no problem with it. We think hey, we know we all gonna be good, right? Okay, just make sure it's showing up everything you know that that it needs to be. You got get healthy, get healthy, and come back. That's what it, that's the main thing for you, all right? I know you're gonna be on your business. I ain't got no question about that, man. All mm-hmm. right. It's good seeing you out here. So you watching the show. I appreciate it. Yeah. We appreciate the love here. Come on out. Come see us. Sure. We might have to reach out to you, man. Come on the show. 
You know, uh, you know what? Good, man. Be good to talk to you. Yeah, we love to see how his recovery is going and, and the, how he's um, you know getting back. Um, and then one thing I want to talk about before we left tonight, obviously not defensive line related, but uh, earlier I made a tweet uh, uh, talking about uh, potentially bringing in Hollywood Brown. I saw that he's one guy out there who still hasn't been signed yet. Uh, I found an old tweet, uh, old tweet of the Chiefs going to his like pro day back in the day, and I said it's time to make it happen. And I tagged him in the tweet, and I had a, a graphic of Mahomes in Hollywood throwing a pass. And then a couple minutes later, it was liked by Hollywood Brown, JD. There's a kind of mixed bag here on on Twitter as far as Hollywood Brown in Kansas City. They like some like it, some don't like it. What are your thoughts on this potentially happening? You know what, man? It's what I believe. Okay. Uh, I, I think that we, we don't really know much about Hollywood Brown. I don't think people really know much about him. Okay. Uh, all they know is he was in Baltimore, didn't work out with Baltimore. Uh, he goes out to Arizona, decent out of Arizona, right? Uh, but what I do know about him is that joke is fast. Uh, he can get past the defense. He's got good hands. And he's a baller, okay? In the right system, he could do really well, okay? I think sometimes when you start seeing guys go from team to team, that's concerned, okay? Let's just let's, let's just talk about it, all right? Let's just, we're just going to speak, you know, clearly here. So it's always a question, what is it that teams are concerned about, that they don't want to keep him here, that they're willing to trade a guy like this away or go somewhere else and not say, hey, look, this is a guy that we can we can have, we can keep and retain him uh, for our future, right? That's always a question that fans have, co- coaches have, everybody has questions about that. That's what I'm saying. I, look, what I see on film, I like, okay? A uh, little bit of what I watched in Arizona was just okay. All right? I think when he was in, in, in Baltimore, did a great job. I liked everything he did in, in Baltimore. And he was killing folks. You know what I'm saying? It, it was, it was, it was uh, what's the name? He's talking. Okay, Lamar. Lamar was, you know, he's throwing to it. But apparently, I guess things just became sour. They just felt like they couldn't move forward with this guy and, and keep him. And they was just like, hey, we're going to go ahead and release him. Now, it doesn't mean that it's nothing nefarious. Doesn't necessarily mean that he's not a capable guy. Doesn't mean any of those things. It's just people have questions. Okay. Right. And rightfully so. We're going to have concerns of, you know, what's going on behind the scenes. For what I've heard, I've heard he's been, he's a good guy. I heard he's, he's professional. Uh, he likes playing. Uh, and he likes competing. Right. And this is just off the field things that I've heard about him. So I'm like, oh, well, shoot, that's, I like that. Okay. A guy that wants to win and he's in the right system with the right people, Kansas City will be a, a, a perfect place for him, a perfect place. So if he likes it, hey, man, shoot, we'll love it. All right. My thing is give your best years of your career, bring them over to the Chiefs. Okay. Come over here, man, and, and do your thing. Right. If you couldn't do it in Baltimore, you couldn't do it over in Arizona. Come over here to Chiefs Kingdom. We we'll appreciate you. Throw the ball to you and let you ball. That's what that's how I feel about it. OK, but I do think that's probably part of the reason. If some people like it. They don't love it because they don't quite know anything about it. They don't. And, and, and I'm, I'm telling you, like when you look at numbers, numbers don't tell you everything. Right. They just, they just don't. They don't tell you everything because it goes into the context. Well, who was throwing you the football? Right. What type of offense was he in? Okay. What routes was he running? You know, what did the matchup look like? Right? Um, is this guy not going to give up on you? Is he not going to give up on any plays on you? Okay. Does he come to work every single day without questioning you about you, you coming to work? Is he watching film? Is he getting better? What is all those things, the intangibles that he's doing that makes him who he is? That's the thing that everybody's got to understand, especially in the NFL. Man, this is how this thing works. Okay. So, I say this because everybody is not a is a great fit, right? It's just not. Okay. We were expecting 
MVS to come in, fit a role, be all of this, and then all of a sudden it didn't happen. Okay, we didn't, you know, he wasn't able to 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 be the guy that we thought he was going to be. Okay, not taking away from him, offense is slightly different than what they went up there at the Green Bay, and so things change. You you, you got to you got to be able to uh, make adjustments around the guys that you have, and you put them into you know your offense, right? That's what you got to be able to do. Can Hollywood Brown do that? I, absolutely. Absolutely. He's an athlete. No doubt about it. Uh, with that, I've said there's other guys. Okay. We talked Darnell Mooney is another guy that we talked about. Okay. Uh, guy that I brought up. Okay. I think you see Tyreek Hill said the same thing. And I was like, facts. It's Curtis Samuels. Curtis Samuels is a baller. Right. I like Curtis Samuels a lot. He was a, with the enemy last year. So he learns. He knows the Chiefs offense. He understands the terminology. He understands all those different things. He could come here right now to play. And give you what you need. So that's not saying that we don't go and draft another guy, okay? Or maybe find another guy in free agency. I'm not, you know, there's tons of guys. I think with this deal that got done with 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 Chris Jones, everybody got to sign a release. Like, okay, now we can start moving forward a little bit, right? Now, now we can start putting this thing together. Things are starting to, to manifest itself a little bit better, a lot clearer. So uh, there's other guys out here that could that come out. So I'm gonna give you one, all right? I want to go. I wasn't gonna talk about this, but I'll talk. This is what me and Barbara Shop was talking about today, all right? And, and I'm I'm not saying this has happened. I don't know, but I don't know if I should. No, say it, say it. Let's, let's hear. Let's get the inside scoop. Well, no, I, it's not necessarily inside scoop. It's not inside scoop. This is just this is just playing GM, okay? And Sean Barber proposed a deal saying, "Would you take a Justin Jefferson?" Okay, and knowing that you probably have to pay, him, you know, nineteen million or whatever for this year. Okay, now he has to come back, and you know he's going to be a free agent. You know he's going to ask for a higher ticket. You could possibly, you could possibly uh, franchise tag it, right? Maybe not hit it over the head or whatnot, but at least you could put. Maybe in a realm of doing some things, some possibilities. I, you know, I went on board for it and all. I'm like, man, there ain't no way I'll give up. Because I think he said the scenario was give up a first and a fourth. A first this year and a fourth next year. I'm just like, no, I don't, I don't, I don't think you will. Yeah. But there's a lot to be said of what he, what he, what he was talking about, though. Uh, some of the scenarios. Uh, it's just a lot of conversation there. We, we had a guy. I said, man. I said, shot, man. How long have you been thinking about this? He said, man, JD for a long time. <laughs> so <laughs> there's scenarios there. Is is it beyond the the, the 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 realm of possibility to go get a Justin Jefferson? Maybe not. Maybe not. We don't we we wouldn't be on the hook for like a T Higgs, like we had to pay a guy right now. Okay. If you trade and you know, from what I understand, I guess, and then this is this this is the conversation that Snead was getting looked at by by the Vikings. Vikings was coming to Snead. Okay, it was like a report coming out over that. Yeah. Uh. So there's some things, possibilities there. You know, if if you're this three P and you're trying to do some things, do you go all the way in on a receiver like that? Okay. And which gives a break for Travis Kelsey and Patrick Mahomes that you don't have to worry about anything wide receiver wise. Okay. Can you imagine Justin Jefferson, Rasheed Rice? And can you imagine that? I, I think for me, with this whole thing, is it's like it would be a good example would be like the, the Phoenix Suns, for example. So they're paying, uh, they're paying Book, Devin Booker, Kevin Durant, Bradley Bill. The rest of the team is on vet minimum deals. You're going to have to go extremely budget with the rest of that team if, you, if you're paying. Because that's, that's three guys right there taking on a lot of salary. And yes. you have to go extremely budget with everybody else. And it's like, yeah. Like, we, so, we we tried that route with the, the, the you know, we had it before Tyreek Hill got paid. And we were like, eh, nah, we're not going to pay another guy and have the, our, our, our salary cap be dedicated to three dudes. <laughs> so, Okay. And it, it was a lot of scenarios we talked about. Okay, I don't want to talk about them here. All right? <laughs> Not right now. Not right now. <laughs> uh, 
about how this how you can actually operate this, how you can how you can do because he had he had a, he had a pretty good case. Uh, I told Shot Man, we had to we had to come on the show. We had to talk about this. All right, it's always good, you know, have these yeah. conversations. Uh, you know, what if and if he could and all, you know all these different things. Uh, but kind of going back to the whole Holly, Hollywood Brown. Okay, I like Hollywood Brown. I think you could probably, with the money that we got, we could probably get a Hollywood Brown and then maybe another guy, depending on what the, what the cost was going to be. Okay, if you could work it out, team friendly. Look, guys getting paid, and they see other guys getting paid, right? That, I mean, that's just that's the nature of the business. Everybody's going to try to get their payday. And I'm, I'm not mad at them for it at all. The bargaining chip that we have is, well, if you come here, you're going to be a, a, a Super Bowl champion, okay? Your name is going to go down in history, all right? Being part of the, a dynasty uh, that people now is going, is, 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 is going to be able to see. You're going to have to be able to notice. Yep. And you're going to be a part of it. So why not go ahead and put your name up in lights with everybody else, with the lights of Patrick Mahomes and everybody else that helps you to help win a dynasty, a three peat, maybe a four peat. Like a, you know, you had to. I mean, I, go sell it, yeah. go sell it. Hey, if you go do this, look, we'll give you. I don't know, maybe eight million, eight and nine. The, ju the, the juju type deal, and that's essentially what the the the, the, the what put him over the edge was. Hey, here's a Super Bowl trophy. That could be that could be you. And then one year, eight million was the was the deal in the end. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, and there's more on uh, Hollywood Brown. I guess is doing more stuff on Twitter. Um, this uh, one uh, follower at Rice Baby Four, um, they put him into a group chat on Twitter, and he's responding back to them. I guess they asked him about the contract. He said numbers looking all right. Could use a little more, but taking less for a ring. You know, I think he's just playing with the with these fans. Uh, and then. Hey. They asked him what number he. Well, they asked him what number he wanted. He said, "Give me three for three, Pete, please." And then he said, and they asked, "Are you coming to KC?" And he said, "Of course, I'm coming to KC. We just can't say it yet." So I think he's, I think he's messing around with with Chief fans and stuff. But I think he's a good sport. Yeah, yeah, man. Look, listen, look. We are, I told you before, Chris is doing this, and guys, this is this is kind of like their, this is their entertainment now doing all season. Because all season fans have been messing with the with the players. And <laughs> now all season players can mess with the fans. Yeah, okay? you're back to them, yep. Yeah, now the rabbit got the gun now, huh? Now the rabbit got the gun. So I don't know. But it, it uh no, it'd be good. It, it'd be good. I, I think I think he'd be a good fit here. It would be like, it would be fun too. We can actually see bombs again and the nine routes again from our from our guys uh from Mahomes to, uh, tossing bombs to uh to receivers again. And that he'd be he he'd, he'd expand the offense we have that deep threat again and a guy who can kind of do it all he's so he's so quick man i remember him in oklahoma he was so fun to watch and there's been elements of that he's flashed in arizona and baltimore but it wasn't the consistent stuff we saw in college obviously different the stakes are higher different different game altogether but i mean he has shown he can still be that guy in the nfl and i mean he's gonna have a, he would have Patrick mahomes and kelsey and he reed all these guys i mean it, it would it would be really fun to have hollywood brown uh but i guess we'll we'll see what happens over the next few days we, we we have a different standard. We have a different standard here. Okay, when a guy walks in the building, before he walks in the building, it's going to be understood. Okay, what that looks like. All right, and I don't think I don't think he'll back up from it. I don't think any guys that we talked about will back up from those things. Okay, the three receivers that we named. Right. Yeah. O Omar said, if the Chiefs signs Justin Jefferson, the other NFL fans will riot and boycott. Boy, if you who you tell it. Who are you telling? Them suckers be like, man, they don't wrote the script for the next five years for the Chiefs. They yep. wrote the script. There yep. it is. Script <laughs> writers are, are on it again. Should have told me this rig. Yeah, they would not be happy about that. <laughs> okay. All right. But all right, everybody. So, uh, so JD and I will be back on Wednesday night for Chief Concerns, our midweek show. And then this week we'll be doing a special uh, Thursday show on Bleacher Report at 2 p.m., uh, just kind of give a grade of our free agency, our offseason so far. Um, hopefully there's more moves made by that point, J.D., but otherwise it's just Chris Jones and Drew Tranquil, which, you know, and Matt Ariza too. And I think so, someone just said that Tommy Towns just signed a two-year, $6 million deal with uh, the Houston Texans. So Townsend is officially gone. Uh, so good for him, good for, for the punter yeah. to get his uh, get his contract. Yeah, appreciate all but, the things, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, so. Appreciate everybody coming in. 
and, and seeing us tonight, look, I, I can never tell how many people are in here. I can only see the chat, so I have no idea how many people are in we, we matched that. We, we got up to about 62 earlier on. That's beautiful. In the, in the beautiful. 62 beautiful souls, beautiful people out there. Glad y'all came in to come see us. Run, me, run my mouth, talk about some good chief stuff, right? Yes, sir. So this, we'll see. We'll see you guys Wednesday night and then again on Thursday. So you guys, you guys got a few a few times of us this week. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, look, y'all take it easy. Love y'all. Appreciate you all. Thank you for all the engagement and, and talks. Hey, man. Keith the Chief, man. We're keeping it in. We're looking for the three P. Chris Jones who came here. He signed and he's here for the rest of this time. Hey. We bought in, Marcus. We here, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We'll keep it going, right. baby. We'll keep it hey. going. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right, everybody. We hope everyone has a good night. Love you, everybody. Love you, JD. Love you too, brother. All right. See y'all. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out the best clips from Chief Concerns. And if you prefer to listen to the show, subscribe and follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and anywhere else you get your podcasts.